Grapes are on the dirty dozen list of the foods with the most pesticides. But do you think about that when you drink wine? We traveled to Ampelos Cellars to learn how they're growing organic grapes to help keep dangerous chemicals out of your wine glass. Now I love your wine because it is organic and biodynamic and sustainable. That's amazing. There aren't many wines out there and obviously you're the first in the United States to grow that way. What made you want to grow organic, first of all? So I think a part of it, yes, was that we moved in here and we opened the windows at night and you're breathing and then you see a tractors are driving around with sprayer rigs and what are they spraying out there? And you see that there's uh, crossbones and skulls and no entry for four days and you're like, hang on a second, my horses live down here, my <coughs> dogs are right here. We're, I mean, you're worried about what is it you put in your body? What are you breathing there? Now, there was one other thing I wanted to ask you. It's about the certain chemicals that are in used in growing grapes when people are growing them conventionally. I was looking this up online and trying to figure out more information about it, but not much is published about it. So you mentioned um, Roundup that's used as a, uh, a herbicide. What are some of the others that you know of in conventional grape growing that uh, you know you wouldn't use as an organic and biodynamic? Yes, yeah, so there, there, the aspects of the grape growing where they are just a bunch of you know bad pesticides that you can spray out and put poison now to kill some of the pest like critters out there. But the other part of it is what you can do in a winery. And that is actually really scary because there, there are 62 or 65 or what it is, different chemical ingredients you're allowed to add in the winemaking process. Isn't sawdust or wood chips one of them? They're definitely one of wines? them, but that's not yeah. the, on the list of the chemicals. But there are other chemicals that you can add. And it's just like scary when you read that list. There's some of them where you say, okay, yeah, that makes good sense. Okay, so you can add tart tartaric acid, which is derived from organic grapes. Okay, that's fine, you can do that. But there are certain products that are made to kill bacteria. And some of these products are literally, can be dangerous at high levels. And I don't know about your wine consumption level, but Rebecca and I, we love wines. We love good wines. We drink wines every night. And we sometimes go out to friends' places and they'll say, oh, I don't have good wine, but uh, let's try some of this. And we're always a little bit worried about that <laughs> yeah. because sometimes, you know, you've been out there and you just had two glasses of wine. You didn't really care much about the wine. So you had two glasses of wine and you wake up the next day and you got that headache up yes. here. You're like, what the heck? I didn't drink five glasses. I only had two glasses. Why do I get a headache out That's of right. this? And the reason is because there was a chemical that was put in by the winemaker along the way and some of these chemicals are really bad for you. They can cause headaches. They can be bad for your body. That was one of the questions that I wanted to ask because I know when I drink organic wine like yours and from some other organic producers, I never feel that horrible feeling when you wake up in the morning. And I can feel that, like you said, from one or two glasses of other wine. So it is. it has to be the chemicals that are in there. And that's what started to get me to really think about it. And it's, it's interesting when you drink organic wine, you won't generally feel that way. Um, when it comes to, there was something that you mentioned to me in a chemical, is it DMDC? Uh, Dimethyl dicarbonase, DMDC. Is that something that conventional wine Nasty stuff. Okay. Methyl is basically a poisonous alcohol. And that's something that in high dosage that you can go blind from, you can die from. What does it do for the wine that's beneficial that the conventional? Kills bacteria. Ah. So if for whatever reason there's some problems with the wine, and again, I don't know because I've never used it, and thanks goodness, I'm, I'll never use it. But my understanding is that wineries, winemakers will make decisions to add it to the wine to make sure that nothing goes bad with the wine at a later point in time in the bottle. Got it. So I view it more as an insurance policy because you've been a lazy farmer or you've been a lazy winemaker along the way. So Peter, tell us about some of the herbicides that conventional wine growers can use. Yeah, the traditional method is you got soil, you got rain coming down, you got sunshine, you got winds, and what happens is, is that the weeds will start growing. You don't want weeds under your vine, they're competing with the vines for nutrients and for water, etc. So you want to get rid of the weeds. The easy way to do that is you spray a herbicide. Herbicide, Roundup, we all know about Roundup, you can buy it down at Home Depot, the problem with it is that the active ingredient in Roundup is glyphosate. Glyphosate can now be proven, they can be traced into wine that is made from vineyards where they applied Roundup. Glyphosate is also proven by a United Nations study that came out two or three years ago that it is carcinogenic, it can cause cancer. 
So therefore, I'm not saying that if you drink a bottle of wine from a vineyard where they sprayed Roundup, you'll get cancer tomorrow. But it is just one way if you want to avoid that risk in your life, avoid wines that's made from vineyards where they applied herbicides. Well, you can really feel the energy out in your vineyards. And I love that what you told us about controlling pests such as rodents and insects. Can you tell us you're using rather than just spraying, you know, harsh chemicals, you are using some natural methodology. Yeah. Tell me how you control the gophers. It, it's just fascinating because you want to build a partnership with Mother Nature. You don't want to control it. The plants, the soil are communicating to you. You've got to learn to work together with it all. And you have some problems out there that you want to control. So for instance, we've got gophers. What can you do with gophers? You can put a bunch of poison down in the soil. It's probably not good for the soil. And what do the gophers do to the wine? Just the so gophers, they will chew on the root systems. And we have every year we lose maybe 50 or 100 plants to gophers because they eat off the root systems. And if you just let them, leave them out there, they will multiply and suddenly you have thousands of gophers, you've got to keep them under control. Well, it turns out, guess who likes gophers? Owls, especially when owls are breeding, have little owls. Wow. And they're so quiet, they're amazing critters. So, you know, that, that's, I think, is one great example of avoiding putting a bunch of uh, pests out there, avoiding putting chemicals, putting poison in the ground. What about if a, 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 a gopher dies from that and my dog finds a gopher and runs around and chews on it and it's been poisoned, what's it going to do? Right. Another thing that I just, just love to, when you think about examples of how to work with Mother Nature, we got good insects and bad insects. So we have like aphids and leaf hoppers and other bad insects. The good insects can be ladybugs. And you think ladybugs are cute, they're actually brutal insects because they will go after the bad insects, they eat them, kill them. So we want to have ladybugs here, so therefore what we do is we encourage their habitat. Some people think that with organic wine or organic produce or organic food in general, that this is a wealthy person, a very first world concern. Um, but when you think about it, I've, I mean, and I've seen, you know, even going through the farmland, you see that the people working on the farm are the ones spraying and coming into contact a lot of time with, uh, with these pesticides. And I've heard that millions of brain cells are lost in the U.S. due to people living in farm regions as a result of them coming in contact. Is this something that you um, know much about from experience or have read much about? I don't know about it from experience, thanks goodness. But um, Rebecca reads a ton and she's very curious about this. And a few years ago, she found a study that had been done of farm workers' children in a farming community and the children's IQ Q level compared to city children, same age, background, whatever. And it was statistically proven that the IQ was lower from children that was raised in farming communities. Why? because of they grow up in areas where there's spraying going on. There's drifter sprays. And very often, people have been spraying things that they didn't know the consequences, right? Because we don't do enough test of it. We don't do 30 years test of a new product before we start spraying it. Right. So you don't really know what are the long-term consequences. And the other thing is that when I started farming up here 15 years ago, some of the other guys were spraying Roundup, and they said, come on, you spray Roundup on your soil, it's much easier. You can't even, you, you can't trace it into the vine. It doesn't even get in the grapes. Well, now it's proven it gets into the wine, actually. So there are so many areas where we don't really know the consequences. So how can a person, if somebody cares about wine from hearing this story, they want to go somewhere, say a store or the restaurant, and find a wine that's organic, how, how can they do it? What do you recommend that they do? So the first thing is, again, look for the stamps on it, the, the symbols. So like for instance, this one says sustainability certified, SIP certified. Look for the certifications, USDA organic biodynamic certifications. The second thing is ask questions. But in you, when you go down to, I don't want to mention names, but you go down to some supermarket chains, there's nobody there that knows anything about wines. There are other higher end supermarket chains where they have a wine specialist that knows about the wines. Or even better, go down to the little wine shop down on the corner that does wine and beer and liquor, where there hopefully is a guy that really knows about his, his wines. There are a lot of those little mom and pop shops and they're great to support them. Well, thank you all so much for joining us and thank you, Peter. Hey, for thanks so much for coming up here and joining us. afternoon. Absolutely, cheers guys.